kind of started talking more than we've ever talked is Trey Nine, Eyes on Me, Inc. It's kind of s- sitting in the congregation there. And, you know, it's, it's funny that he's here. You know, I don't know. It's just, I just think God has a sense of humor on some things, on even the thoughts that sometimes, um, you know, you have a thought and then time passes and then stuff happens. And then obviously God, you know, I think I said last week, like sometimes God's doing 10,000 things. This is the problem. God's doing 10,000 things, and we're only aware of three. And then we act as if, you know, God's just not doing anything. Everything he does is about our inner man. We, we care a lot about the outside, man. We care a lot about the outside, but really God is about maturing us. Amen? Amen? And so, um, you know, today, the me- last week, the message was the mountain of obedience, the mountain of obedience. And we talked about everybody giving $40, everybody, everybody, who gave $40 already? Raise your hand. Okay. Now, I don't want to make this weird, but I want to show you something. Could you, I'm just going to do this, all right? Y'all are just going to hate me for it. Would you get up, the people that raised their hand, just real quick? Okay. Now, hear, hear me, hear me. No, no, no clapping. You know, I was looking at a statistic that said that most people, like in churches and stuff, it's usually between uh, 10 to 25% of people that give to, like, nonprofit organizations or churches and stuff. Imagine what we could do if everybody just believed. You guys can sit down. And I don't want to make everybody else look weird because maybe you're like, hey, next week, you know, I was going to give next week. Now you made me look like a non-giver. I'm not saying that. I'm giving you a national average. Listen, we do, I mean, for the size of our church, love, just everything is cost money. Th- this $40, what we wanted everybody was above your tithe, and uh, we're going to give to some nonprofit organizations that are around our community, and then some people within here whose wives have been in hospitals, stuff like that. The Bible talks about, I, I believe in the tithe, the 10%, but I believe that was, that's just a good number. He talks about giving generously as a cheerful giver. And so right now when there's a need, we come together and we just start rocking this thing. So we've raised about $1,800. i am thinking we should be raising more like $16,000. 400 people, $40. Think about it. Real quick. That's the the beauty of having a community like this. Are you all with me? We got some weeks left. Let's, Let's rock this thing. You'll see everybody who it is. Obviously, we don't want to put out in detail unless they want to their, their struggles. But there's some people that it's not because they messed up. You know, it's, they literally are in the hospital. People are losing jobs. Are you with me? It's, you know, and, and the recession shouldn't move us. I was the same Christian during Corona that I am during recession. Like, I don't, I don't know why. I, I, I don't get that. So I, I'm asking for your help as the pastor of this house. Are you with me? You say, I don't have $40. You drink Starbucks. You got $40. (laughs) Think about it. All you got to do is not eat out. Two Starbucks, you're like at 80. (laughs) I'm joking. (laughs) That sucker's expensive. (laughs) Look, y'all with me? Let's, Let's just, I challenge you that if you're like, I don't, okay, don't eat out this week. Just take that and put it in an envelope and go, I'm going to make something. I'm telling you, it's going to break the spirit of something. In your life, you think like forty dollars? Okay, let's get to the message. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I, I see people in life, and I, I, I don't know, maybe my life was a little different. Um, but I just started reading the Bible and believing it. You know, I, I was like, I didn't, I wasn't even at a service like where the piano played, and then all of a sudden, like, I'm gonna give today. Like, I started tithing and giving in prison because I was reading Cheerful Giver. I would take my $50 store, and I would, and you know, in prison, it's hard to give up some of that $50 store. It ain't like we could go to Walmart. We could go somewhere and just kind of pick something up. Are you with me? So you got that $50 store, and I'm going to get $5 from it. Oh, don't let me give a bag of coffee up in that joker or or like a tuna pack or something like that that y'all are like, that's it? I'm like, in there, that's a big thing. Coffee's like, whole grocery store. 
And so now, uh, you know, it just, it just compelled me to do it because the living Christ was in me and it just made me generous. I, I, I would walk to people in the hallway and be like, yo, God told me to give you this. And it felt weird in the beginning, but it's just what compelled me. And I see a lot of people that their confidence in God is paper thin. They, don't, they, they only get what they expect, and that's not much. I hear it in their prayers. They, they are always asking the Lord to bless them. Their prayers are pretty vague. They're, you know, broad. They're not specific. And you know why people don't pray specific prayers, right? Because basically what happens, if it doesn't come through, then you ain't missing anything. Are you with me? You got to be specific. I like being specific because it puts the pressure on God. It's like, you know, I said, I said $1,123.23 type thing. I mean, I know that, might, but when it happens, you know it's God. You know how many you know it's God I have, man, because of that? You got to be specific. Some of y'all maybe just haven't got that bold. Or maybe you don't have as much faith as you think. Or maybe you just have faith in faith. So I'm going to take a step and I'm going to, uh, a faith, and I'm going to deal with the issue of not having faith when it comes to just life, stewardship with money. You know, faith relates to everything, but we are talking about crazy generosity. And, you know, let's show our guests what, you know, that's crazy. Okay, you kind of got to get that. You got to get that in your spirit, right? Because most people say, yo, that's crazy. I say it all the time. That's crazy. But the truth is, no, when things happen, it's because you're, you're aligning yourself with the word of God, and that's God. So we're going to go to 1 John 5. I was just going to read from 3 to 4, but I'm going to read 1 through 4. And we're going to, this, this is how you're going to live in financial victory, but in every other area of your life too. In the Bible, I'm going to show you where it says it. So we're really going to Hebrews 11, 1, 6, but I'm going to start with 1 John 5, 1, 4. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of Him. This is how we know that we love God's children, when we love God and obey His commands. When we obey His commands, right? Just from a good place. Not even, sometimes we just think like, oh, he's such a dictatorship, but he's not. It says, for this is what love for God is. Everybody say this. For this this is what love love for God God is. is. All right, to keep His commands. (laughs) And his commands are not a burden. In other words, they are not heavy. They are light. He's just. He's not unjust. Right? Because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. So everyone who's been born of God conquers what? The world. And remember, it's, it's, it's the word cosmos. It's the world really from their trends and patterns and the way that they think. Okay, so we conquered that way of thinking. This is the victory that has conquered the world. This is the victory. Everybody say, this is the victory. Okay, so I need you to understand. Everybody say, this is the victory. Our faith. So this is how you have victory. It's by your faith. Now let's look at Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. Because if it's our faith, then we really have to understand faith. It says, now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. And remember last week we talked about that it's not really blind faith. You just can't see it, but you're being obedient to what God sees and obedient to his word. So you can see according to his word, even though it hasn't become a reality yet. Are you with me? It says, for this, our ancestors were approved. Everybody say approved. (laughs) So we see that by their faith, these people were approved. You know, I... um, you know, a long time ago, I was sitting with someone, it's kind of funny, and, and he said, hey, study to show yourself prove what? I thought it was hilarious. And I was like, man, you know, it made me think. And I had all the Jesus answers, but I started thinking, if by this they were approved, we study to show ourselves approved, because when we study the word, it's not to puff ourselves up with knowledge, but to know him more. And since you know him more, your faith operates different than a person that doesn't know him more. So by that, you're approved. It said, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was approved. Oh, that's so good. As a righteous man. 
because God approved his gifts. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through his faith. We're still talking about it, aren't we? Awesome. By faith, Enoch was taken away, so he did not experience death. He was not to be found because God took him away. For before he was taken away, he was approved. As one who pleased God. Now without faith it is impossible to please God. Since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists. So basically when we don't, we're not operating in faith, we're actually not believing that he exists. And that he rewards those who seek him. Okay, so I'm going to just read off some stuff to y'all. A few points and uh, about faith and then... Also, uh, stewardship in your finances. Number one is the principle of faith, right? You got to please God through your faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 1 says, Be assured of things hoped for. I, I use a different translation because I like this word, and convicted. Uh, now, I want to show you something. And convicted. Or you say, No, it's because he's been in prison before. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm going to show you how this applies to that. See, when I got incarcerated, I was convicted of a crime that I had firm belief in. Nobody could talk me out of what I had firm belief in. That's why I wound up in prison. That's why I was convicted. Here it's saying, be assured of things hoped for and convicted. In other words, you should have a firm belief when God is speaking to you through the word of God. It says we are to have faith that grabs hold of our hopes and desires and believe God can bring them into reality. Often we don't see the substance God offers in the invisible realm due to lack of faith. Remember Jesus, he didn't perform many miracles because of their unbelief. The Bible says that the just will live by faith. There is power in faith. You got to place your faith in God to receive power. Jesus says to have faith in God. Don't have faith in faith, to have faith in God. You find your power in the person of God and not in the amount of faith. Do you understand that? We've been talking about uh, his name. We did a whole thing, his name. The whole year we've been talking about all his names and who he is. It's getting a deeper, you know, we use the word intimacy. Intimacy. Right? It's really getting to know who he is. The more you know who he is, I always say, look, this is what people do. Faith in faith is this. You're trying, Lord, you hear this all the time, right? Lord, uh, give me more faith. Lord, I need more faith. I need faith. I need faith. You don't need more faith. You need more truth. You, it says you need a tiny little bit of faith to move a mountain. So you don't need more. A little one moves a whole mountain. How much faith do we need? Now, the more truth I know and the more no, See, they say, man, he has great faith. No, I just have great truth. I, I just believe in a God that will do exceedingly and abundantly more than I can hope, think, or imagine. I, I just believe in this God uh, that speaks to me, and uh, then I move as I'm led by his spirit. Are you with me? So faith in a tiny God diminishes our perspective. You got to see God properly and your faith will grow. The bigger God gets, the more, faith, the more your faith grows. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. The power is in the person and not in the faith. And you have to catch that because sometimes we try to build up that confidence, you know, just confidence in what we could do. Come on, we've all been there. Man, you try to pump yourself up. You remember who you were without him? That's where you wound up. (laughs) That's where you wound up. So for us to live separate from that, You know, there's always a way that seems right to you. You can't build up enough confidence to do what only God can do. Come on, now let's get into the stewardship part. So everybody understands that, right? Because the word is seed form. When we're talking about doing stuff for our community and giving. You guys should see, it talks about the fruit of the tree. All you got to do is look. 
Stewardship by faith. What everybody loves to talk every time you start getting into the whole anything money, people get like, ah, <laughs> you know, they think Trey Nine, he goes to the airport and he just goes, hi, I'm Trey Nine. They just let him fly for well, free. I'm, I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> Not accurate. Look, stewardship by faith. Let me read you Luke 16, 11. This one might hurt a little bit, but it's so good. It says, steward your money and, uh, hold on, hold on. That's my point. <laughs> steward your money in faith and expect to receive spiritual riches. Okay, this is what the verse says. So if you have not been faithful with worldly wealth, who will trust you with that which is genuine? I, 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 want, I want to just, I just, I just really want you, because we always think it's about the money. It's never about the money. It's about the reason you have that grip on your money is that the perspective that you have is you don't see him as owner or you don't see him as, as, as heavenly, you know, you don't, you don't think him first. You, you, you think him second, third, fourth, fifth. It just depends how your life is lived. So money is not true riches. True riches are spiritual rich, riches. Remember Ephesians 1 says that all of our blessings are in Christ. Okay, the, the money test is the least of the test. I totally believe that there's a crucifying of the flesh as you keep releasing money. That what winds up happening is something deeper than just the giving of the money. That's why cheerfully we should give. We should be generous with it. I always, the tithe, I believe in it because I don't think God ever changes. And I know people have the old, old Testament and all this stuff. Look, he never changes. I think that's a good starting point. I think it's a good starting point. When we want to we wanna just get to a place where we're giving out to the rest of the community, even other people who have, that's a good starting point. I think it was a purpose-driven life. He was like, he was like, man, I'm going to live. I wanna, he lives off the 10 and gives away the 90. I don't know about you, but I've been trying to hit that for years. The only way you hit that is you keep 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's how you hit it. You don't just wait until you get it. You'll never do it. God will not trust you with spiritual riches if you're not faithful in managing your money. A lot of you just don't know how to manage your money, so God becomes third. You don't know how to steward. That's where it gets quiet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you this line. It comes out of Ecclesiastes 11. Please go read the whole thing. At the end, it ends with youth stuff. But I'm just going to give you the first line. Cast your bread on the surface of the waters. Cast your bread on the surface of the waters. Let me tell you what that means. See, these guys, these farmers, they would get the grain, you know, they would uh, get the grain, put it in sacks, and then they would put it on a ship that was going to go out into the Mediterranean Sea, and here's the problem. You're standing on the dock. You farmed your grain and your wheat, your bread. You put it in sacks. You delivered uh, it to the ship. You leave the port. About 20 minutes later, what happens? You don't see the boat anymore. The boat is out of sight, and possibly your bread could be gone forever, and God is asking you today, do you believe that that ship is coming back? See, because they had to believe that when they put the grain on the ship, that once it left and they couldn't see it, they had to believe that it was going to come back. Do you believe that everything you invest in those things that are eternal, that God is going to give something back? And I'm not talking Vegas. Well, you start, you know, I, Pastor Richard, he's like, I'm doubling down, you know. <laughs> I'm doubling down. Do you believe that he's going to take your bread and deliver it somewhere else? That's the question. Are you casting your bread into the water? You have to practice uh, your faith. You have to live a faith that is characterized by action. Faith without works is useless. Faith in order to work must produce action, not just talk. You got to trust that God will carry out the, your desires that line up according to Scripture. You know, I was sharing before, like, I don't know. For me, I read it, and I just started giving. There were embarrassing moments for me. I'm not saying that. It, like, look, when I first church I went to, I'm tithing off of $4. I got, I'm, you know, I'm a little hood still, so I'm pulling the change real slow. They pass the basket. I slowly put that joker right, my hand on, as much as I could on top of it so I could drop the change and keep it going. And then talk to the person so I can take their eyes off. You with me? I'm 
Pastor Todd knew me in school then. I, I, you know, I, I'm sitting in class with a bunch of 20-year-olds and stuff. Right? They're like, we're going to a trip. I ain't got two nickels. Ruthie's baby Ruth, my baby girl, my sweet. Sorry, I can't. Uh, let me go over here because I'll stay joking over there. You know, I, 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 I told her, I said, God, if you want me to learn this stuff and you want me to go to school, I need you to pay for this. Like, Ruthie ain't going to help me. And I was like, don't you dare. even I don't, nothing. I don't want no help from you. That was true conversation. I was like, I don't want to help from you. Because he wants me to go to school. He wants me to do this. I have a calling in my life. Fine. You're going you're gonna to meet the need. And so they would say, hey, we have a missions trip and we're going. This is, yo, I'm, I'm close to 40 years old, y'all. All these kids are pulling out the 60 bucks. $60, I'm like waiting till everybody kind of goes, right? And I'm like, man, I don't got it. God's like, I thought you believed me. And so I'm like, oh, he's like, go sign up. And so when I would sign up, Pastor Todd don't even know this. This is my teacher back then. I would go and I sign the little thing, and they say, you got the $60? And I would be like, no, I don't have it right now, but I'm going to bring it Monday. And so then I would be like, oh, and I felt so embarrassed. So God's like breaking down all that pride, all that, right? I'm just like, oh, I felt so dumb. But hey, I would want, somehow I would wind up going. It's, I don't even know. I don't even know how to explain it. It would just happen. Somebody would be like, that's crazy. You got to let your belief in, look, let your belief in God control what you do in the present. What you believe will control how you act in the natural realm. What you believe about God will control how you act regarding what he says in the Bible. You got to have perseverance of faith. Don't let your circumstances detour you. Remember, we were talking about uh, relativism. Last week, we talked about rel relativism, where you make choices depending on your circumstances. And we said that most people live in society today based on relativism. We said that out of that relativism, social ethics gives birth. What is right and wrong uh, changes with the situation. And that's usually what we do when it comes to the things of God. We have uh, basically not much literacy when it comes to reading the Bible. Sometimes we read it for puffed-up knowledge. Not really for the application. Right? And so here, look at Ecclesiastics 11, 4, 5. I'm telling you, you just got to read this whole thing just on your own. You just got to sit with the Lord and you just got to read this thing. It says, one who watches the wind, <laughs> one who watches the wind will not sow. And the one who looks at the clouds will not reap. Just as you don't know the path of the wind or how bones develop in the womb of a pregnant woman, so also you don't know the work of God who makes everything. You just really need to spend some time with the Lord and just read that. You can't let circumstances stop you from trusting God. Don't let doubt detour you. When doubt is holding you back, drag doubt to Jesus. Listen, when he invites you to obedience, he doesn't show us the whole picture. He's asking you to take a step. He gives you provision for every step of the journey. Your blessing comes in seed form. Remember, you know, Pastor Todd was talking to me. He's like, look, while Abraham was coming up, that ram was coming from somewhere too at the same time, climbing on the other side. He just didn't appear. So if your provision is in Christ and God is doing things, then the only thing that's stopping it is you're not taking the step for him to meet you there. So think about it. If he didn't do it, the ram would the ram be up there by himself. And he never would have saw the provision. And he wouldn't have been considered the father of faith. Everything has been paid for and it's found in his presence. Remember we said provision is in Christ? Christ is the word. Faith will take you places that explanations don't fit. If you're going to be presence driven, you must be word focused. The spirit of God always lines up with the word of God. Let me read you some verses. Let me just read them to you. 
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we understand that when we read the Bible, again, I have to say this, it's not for puffed up knowledge. It's so I could know how He moves. It's so that I could know when people talk to me. You understand? Uh, for the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit, of the joints and the marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And you know we need that because our heart is desperately wicked above all things, so we need the Word as a mirror to tell us, hey, what we need to move around. He says, but he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. All scriptures breathe out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh, who, uh, the flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. And we all love those verses. But then you get to this verse. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 7. This, the point is this. The person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should do as he has decided in his heart. Not reluctantly or out of compulsion since God loves a cheerful giver. I, I, and, and here's the thing we've been killing it but I feel like when it's vacation time in the summer everybody gets mm, mm. it's almost like, like God don't exist in the summer months it's kind of wild it's like God don't exist in the summer months and the minute the TV says something and the news media says something God don't exist then either I could only tell you my own personal testimony I, I don't know I've remained I've just remained. Uh, and for those who know me back then, I was probably a little crazier then. I probably learned how to contain the fire a little bit. You know, I was reading the manna that God uh, gave the children of Israel. And you know, I never, I don't know, I always skipped over the part of the coriander seed and when they put it in the rock and put the oil. For some reason, I, you know, so you're asking God to do something. And every week, we give you a word. That word is seed form. It's the mystery of the virgin birth. God. It, it is, because you're the womb that receives the word. And then it becomes engrafted, and you're just a living word, and you just walk around. And, you know, you're going to make a lot of mistakes, and, you know, you have some good brothers around you, and then you just keep working it. Are you with me? But I never saw this. I thought that the children of Israel were complaining. Oh, God, you know how, how we do. Oh, I ain't got this. I ain't got that. You know, da, da, da. everybody's complaining, complaining. Oh, you know, I'm in another bad relationship. After they give you advice 50 times on how to be in a relationship, you still don't want to take the word, though. And then, oh, I don't got money, but you may waste it on everything. So you do everything you think you need to do, and now you're just complaining. You ain't even reading your word. You ain't, you're partial on the purple book. Come on, I keep telling you, do this, do this, do this. I'd be at home already like, I don't know what else to tell him, Lord. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to be a lie. I'm trying to chime bright. <laughs> I'm trying. I know only you can touch the hearts of every man and woman. And then all of a sudden, you know, I thought that when they were complaining like that, Olive Garden breadsticks just started raining. <laughs> You're going to see, that's what I really thought. I was like, Olive Garden, boom, season. You know, they didn't have the salad, but they had the breadsticks, and they were warm and just, just raining breadsticks. And I was like, yo, they didn't have it that bad. They had Olive Garden breadsticks. You know, them dudes should have been happy. It wasn't like that. They winded up getting a seed. They, what they got was coriander seeds. So, you know, just imagine this is what you got. You have this big problem. And all of a sudden, boom, you get this little tiny seed like this. You know, you get all these seeds raining from the sky, and you go, what is it? That's what you got for me, a word? What is it? You, I'm trying to get money. You want me to give it away? What is it? Lord, I, 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 I want patience. And then he gives you kids. What is this? Lord, I want abundance. 
Oh, Lord, I believe in this. <laughs> I want abundance. He gives you a job and you don't like it. What is it? See, he gave it to them in seed. They, it was their job. This is the part I missed. That he gave it to them as a coriander seed. They had to put that in a rock thing, break it down, put the oil, and they made the olive garden bread. See, God will give you a seed that you apply. And as you apply, he is the bread of life. Everything that comes out of that word is like coriander seed, but it's up to you to do the application. That's why you need faith. See, God wasn't going to take Isaac and throw him on top of the mountain. Abraham had to walk him up there. These people had a farm before Cain and Abel gave the, the, the offerings. They had, to, they had to do something. See, you're complaining about what God has given you, and in that seed, it has the potential to save you, your family, the block, the city. I, I, I'm believing for some crazy. I just, damn, I didn't start doing this. Look, y'all, when, 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 when I was like, yes, I thought it was the craziest thing in the planet. When I said yes to the Lord, I was like, all right. So I, I did everything I thought the Lord would want me to do. I went to school, to classes. I did my part. Are you with me? I really didn't know how I just, I, I just didn't. Y'all really, like, I'm, I'm, you know, coming out of prison. I got 50 bucks. I tithe off of that hundred. I don't know what I ate. I think I ate Taco Bell. I went over there, you know, went to church with Baby Ruth. And then passed the bucket. I'm giving the tithe. It was hard. They gave me a hundred. I needed a hundred and fourteen to get my class for drug conviction. Y'all understand? Everything was lopsided. I need 114. They gave me 100. I'm at 80. I tied. I'm at 70. Or, you know, whatever that was. I'm like, I got $60. They're like, you got you to gotta get the 114. I said, I can't get the 114 because I don't have a license. And I can't get a job without a license. So how am I going to get the job with the license if I don't got the 114 to pay for the ID? You understand? Yes. You, at, those are the times where... Uh, I can't say what I would have said, but... I, I, I just would have been like, forget this, and I would have walked away. I'm, I'm, I'm not driving, I, nothing. I'm just jacked. All I had was the word of God to believe in. I had to keep asking myself, do you believe it? Okay, well, keep, keep moving forward, keep moving forward, keep moving forward. Everything it asked me to do. You're upset because you don't like how God has given it to you. It's in there. It's in that seed. And you know, when we were first on the radio, I was just thinking about this this morning. When we were first on the radio, I, I started, I had my first job, and the Lord was like, I want you on the radio. They gave me a price. The, the only money that I was getting, I used to pay for the radio. For about two years. It was the hardest two years of my life. I had nothing. And I'm not giving you this message so you can think, oh, it turns out. I'm just talking the principle of faith. Because God told me to do the radio. And I would go to Ruthie and praise God that she loved the Lord. And she's like, well, did God tell you to quit? I'm like, I, all I needed was her to be like, well, quit. I went, yes. <laughs> and so did God tell you to quit? She's, and I'd be like, No. She's like, well, then keep doing it. I was like, but I don't have no money. I don't have anything. I was like, I can't even take you out. She's like, but you're doing what God is telling you to do. So then I'm like, fine. And I would go and I'd give him, i get the $300. And I would, you know, back then I would just give him the thing. And then I'd be like, Lord, please. Some of y'all are so focused on what you want. And it's all about you. Could you imagine? It's real easy. $40, everybody. Boom, we raise it. Boom, we give a couple of ministries that are out there. Bless the church. Boom, keep moving forward. Every time, all hands on deck. Why has always got to be, why we got to believe these numbers? This is a, a numbers that go everywhere. I could talk to Trey now. We can sit and go, yeah. This, this, this. I could talk to Pastor Todd, same con, any pastor. Why? Why those numbers got to be like that? I don't want to have a church just so we can have a good word. I want a church so we can flip the community. Yeah. 
I want a church so that we could flip prison systems and start emptying them out. I mean, you know, I'm the senior pastor. I'm going, I'm going to the prison today, after, immediately after this. We have this little prison thing that I kind of got to go to all these things. And, well, I get to, you know. I'm human. I want to go home. But I believe in it that much. So I'm going to the prison. I do two services, then I go to the prison. Next weekend, I go early in the morning, like at 6 in the morning. Last one I went to, they were like, you know, train on. So that was, it's just good. Y'all understand that? Yeah. What do you believe in? I, I, you know, I know I say the craziest things, and please forgive me, but I, I didn't start doing this just to, like, sugarcoat stuff. Like, I, I, I'm having just a really good conversation with y'all right now, I think. But, like, you know, I, I wonder if there will day a day that we go, hey, this is what we need, and everybody goes, yeah, and one weekend we're done. All right, let's keep moving forward. We did it before. We've given 15 cars when we used to say, hey, this person needs a car. I loved it. Let's, let's get back to that. Because I guarantee you, if I went, <laughs> this, ah, Lord, I'm going to say it. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Okay, look, if I went and I looked at your, your bill statement this week, you spent $40 on something. But hey, God, I got you later. But then, hey, God, where's it at? Yeah. Everyone stands to your feet. Oh. You'll love me, though. You know, right now you're like, Pastor Juan. I just got to give you the truth. Hey, give God a shot. Just believe. I'm not telling you something up here. I'm telling you, go fact check it. Go, go, go read it. You believe. I'm responsible for what I'm telling you. You say, like, does the money thing? Yes, yes, the money thing is a small thing because that's your desire. Let me, let me tell you something. Oh. That's like your inner man, your desire. You can't let it go. You're like, oh, now let me tell you what happens there. When you get in a fight with your spouse, you can't let it go. When you get in a, you can't let it go. That's, it's just, that's why giving, you think it's nothing. It's the, you know why you look at money a lot bigger than any, that's why he talks about mammon and all that. What Pastor Todd's going to cover the spirit of mammon, you make it greater than God because it seems like security. It keeps you, well, as long as I got this money, I'm safe. Nah, you ain't supposed to money. I know people that are jacked with some money. Today's your day. Don't wait. Go today, everybody. Let me see like, oh, the whole church, everybody, $40, $40, $40. I told you to pray about it. If you're going to do one week or if you're going to do four weeks, that's on you. That's between you and the Lord. And you could, you know, I don't do the finances here. You could talk to Pastor Greg or Pastor any of them and say, hey, did Pastor Juan do what he said? I, I, first one all the time. My goal for this church when I first started this church was nobody would ever outgive me percentage-wise. Because somebody else could have more money. <laughs> percentage-wise. This is your day. This is your day. He gave you a seed. I should have brought seeds for everybody. Here's a seed. 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 Remember the first one was the mountain of obedience. That was a seed. Can you be obedient to the thing that God is telling you? Next seed. You can only do that by faith. Amen. I don't even know how to close this. Put your arm on the shoulder of the person next to you. Mm -hmm. Hey, no shoulder untouched. <laughs> you could get out of the rows. You know, you know what I'm saying? You could, you could kind of get out of the rows. Make sure that other guy, look, that guy right there, there's some gaps right there. Make sure that that shoulder, no shoulder untouched. No man left behind. No shoulder untouched. This right here is the picture of the body. This is what we say we believe in, y'all. 
I'm going to put my faith out there. And I'm going to challenge you to just become obedient by faith to what we're trying to do with this, in this body. Right? And then watch how God meets you in other areas. I guarantee you, you'll have a testimony. You think so? Guaranteed. If not, you come to me privately. Look, I'm, oh Lord, I'm going to put myself out there. You know what? You go ahead and do that. You pray and you do what God is telling you to do. And if you're not, you come to me privately and I'll give you the $40. Do not let me down. <laughs> I guarantee you. I guarantee you. You know, I often wonder in the giving thing. I've challenged people, yo, do the whole year. And if th your life doesn't change, I'll give it back to you. And people still don't go for that. They still don't go for that. I'm like... It's a savings account. <laughs> Don't have me believe more for you than you believe in him for you. And so I just want you to pray for your neighbor. Just begin to pray for your neighbor as we close out. Just begin to pray for your neighbor. The way you would pray for you. Maybe that person's nervous and they've never given to God before. Maybe they're going through something so big that they concentrate on themselves so much that for one opportunity they get to think about somebody else so that you can meet the need for them lord i have put my faith out there i have laid it out and lord i know i know who you are i know who you are you're the god of miracles even today you're the god of miracles you're the god that goes exceedingly and abundantly more than we could hope think or imagine god i know that there are people here and we're coming together collectively as a body is what you tell us to do in the word i know your presence will manifest in their life healings will come from this deliverance will come from this homes will come from this job securities will come from this lord so many things will come from this but the thing that would come most is our spiritual capacity lord we would grow internally to knowing you lord that's my prayer that as they they are obedient to your word that today, today, today you show them who you are. You become their ram in the thicket. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand.